This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, from the left coast of the United States, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Lawrence. Hey, Alex. How are you? How you uh, doing? Other than my allergies, I'm fine. So. You, big allergy season out there right now? Oh, the, the wind has been blowing out here nonstop for three weeks, and I guess that's got the pollen going around like crazy. Well, so. I, I used to get it terribly because I had this thing with my eyes and then they did that operation on my eyes and I haven't had a problem since, you know. I mean, I feel it a little bit. I start sneezing now and then, but, you know, and we've been up around 10, 11 on the scale, mm -hmm. uh, which is very high, and yet I haven't had any terrible effects by it for some reason, you know. So, what the hell? You know, that's yep. the way it is. So how is otherwise? How are you doing? Good, good. I was looking up. Uh, <laughs> I looked up celebrities that live to be a hundred. Uh, celebrities that live to be a hundred. Uh, Kirk what? Douglas was a hundred and two. Yeah, I, here, and I, here's one for I, you, Norman Lloyd. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mentioned him. Yeah, hundred and four, five, six, seven, something like that. You know. Irving Berlin. Irving Berlin, if I regards to Broadway, remember me. Now we knew knew Bob Hope lived to be a hundred, but his wife lived to be a hundred and two. Really? Yeah. I'll just... Son of a bitch. Uh, okay, keep going. Uh, George Burns. Yeah, of course. He's a hundred. Yeah. And uh, there was a bunch of actresses, oh, wait a minute, uh, really, wait a minute, wait someone wait. really pretty, I, I'd never heard of. Wait a minute, my mother. Your mother, yes. Because my mother was on radio, she uh, she made it slightly over 100. She made it to about 100 and a half. Wow. And then she decided, I've gone over the finish line, goodbye. Well, I met her when she was in her high 90s. I just remember she was really sharp. Well, you didn't get her in her in hundreds. Okay. <laughs> she, she, was, she was pretty much... Uh, you know, she knew who I was. She th just thought she had saw seen me yesterday when I was living on the East Coast. You know, <laughs> she had a senior moment, <laughs> a senior year. <laughs> you know. Yeah, she went back to high school. She had her senior year. Yeah, uh, I said I had a senior moment. I banged a cheerleader. So. <laughs> That's a perfect Larry Bubbles Brown line. That's a fairly new one. That's not bad, right? It, it, oh, it's very good. <laughs> what, what, what's the line again? I uh, I had a senior moment. I banged a cheerleader. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So it seems like uh, comedians either die very old or very young. <laughs> well, you know, that is the truth. I mean, um, I, I think comedy... It, it, the reason why comedians live to be old is because this is something you can keep doing even as you age. Mm -hmm. Whereas that's not true of a lot of other professions. I mean, there are professions, just the average guy who works and has to raise a family and takes whatever job he has to take in order to do it and so on. I don't think they live that long, you know? But yeah. with comedians, you can keep doing what you're doing. You have to go to your gig the next day, the next day, the next day. I mean, even if you're an old comedian, right, you can play yeah. like those senior citizen villages in, 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 <laughs> in Miami, you know? I mean, and many of them do, believe it or not, you know, so... Uh, or it, cruise ships at the end of your life, I think, is a... Yeah. That yeah. always sounded like the nightmare. Uh, do you know remember? comedians who work cruise ships? I do. They they make decent money, but it just sounds like awful. But yeah, yeah. Because I I I wondered 
you know, if if it was that, you know, I would hate to do anything on a cruise ship. I'm sorry. Some of them you just do one show, but you're on the boat for a week, and everybody knows you. And uh, well, uh, the advantage is, oh, hey, I'm taking a cruise. But where do they put you up? Do they put you up with the with the crew? Uh, you get your own cabin. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 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 I remember when the Holy City Zoo was closing, Jeremy Kramer gave a uh, speech to the young comedian. <laughs> Some of you will wind up on cruise ships. You cannot break the porthole by banging your head against it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think I did. I, did we talk about this last time? I talked about it either with you or with, uh, with uh, Kravitz. That, you know, they used to do these things where, uh, where a travel agent would come to the radio station and say, we'd like Alex Bennett to go on a cruise with his, and then offer it up to his audience, you know? Uh-huh. Uh, and that's very common. If you've ever listened to radio, certain certain personalities will do that. And I, uh, <laughs> I just refused every time. And the reason I refused is I said, the horror would be to be stuck on a cruise ship <laughs> I can't get away <laughs> with my fans. Okay, <laughs> you know I really don't want to spend a week with my fans on a cruise ship where the only time I can get off is if you're like in Belize and they want you to buy souvenirs. You know, mm -hmm. I, I went. That's uh, horrible. You know, I, I'd be stuck in my room. Yeah, you'd be uh, bothered by everyone. 24-7. Yeah. So, and we we did a cruise. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we were at Live 105. Um, we did a cruise for the fans or around the bay. October of 86. God damn you. God damn you. Were you on that cruise? I was, yeah. That was the most horrible thing that ever happened to me. Because you're stuck on a boat for three hours with people constantly. And so I remember when you talked to Larry Vowles Brown and this Larry Vowles Brown <laughs> and you're going, oh, get away, get the fuck away. And then, and the, this wasn't the kind of cruise where you had a cab and then you could go to it, you know? No, we, we were out there, yeah. Yeah, you remember just everybody walking around on a boat, on a part, little party boat going around the bay. And I remember, I, I, for, I should remember who the other comics that were on there were, but I don't. But I remember, I think we did short sets, and somebody was doing their set, and the entire crowd turned away because we, we were going under the Bay Bridge, and people thought that was more interesting than the comic. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was just looking out the Oh, boy. Oh, boy. God, what, 36 years ago, God. Is that it? God, you know how many years ago it was? What what year was that? That was October of eighty six. October of eighty six. Well, that was was that pretty? It was still pretty early in my tenure there. Yeah. Yeah, that was your I think your first year at Live One Hundred Five. Yeah, uh, was that early? I thought it was later on, but I may be wrong. You know, but uh, it was a listener appreciation party they called. Yeah, it. yeah, uh huh. Yeah, yeah, which I didn't appreciate my listeners so I don't know why I was there but yeah. <laughs> no I actually you know I, I, I gotta tell you I've always had a great deal of respect for my audience because I mean they were responsible for who I became especially in San Francisco you know so what, I didn't hate them I just didn't want to be stuck with them that was all you know? exactly it's uh and if you get famous, that would be one of the downsides is you're going to have a lot of converse, <laughs> short-term conversations with people you'll never see again. And well, well, you it's know always what it, awkward. Well, it was at the time, I really didn't realize how famous I was, you know, uh, and how famous I had become in San Francisco. And I had no concept of that. And now I understand it because I am not famous. So I understand what fame is, and I can look back on it and go, yeah, I was pretty famous in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would walk into a restaurant for dinner, and heads would turn. I, and I often thought they weren't saying, is that Alex Bennett? They were saying, have you seen that really ugly guy that just walked <laughs> into the place? 
Yeah. Well, but I, you were I, hitting hundreds of thousands of people, so you were known. Well, I mean, we every day we had an audience of about twenty thousand, I think it was thirty thousand, something like that. You know, and it was a, it was a sizable audience. It was pretty good, pretty good. You know, certainly not terrible. But uh, oh well, you know, I it's like I have on my on my web page. I used to be a big shot. <laughs> It's one of my favorite quotes from a movie. It's from the movie The Roaring Twenties. And uh, Jimmy Cagney has just killed um, Humphrey Bogart. And now Humphrey Bogart's goons are chasing him. And as he's running down the street, they manage to shoot him. And he stumbles over to the steps of a church and collapses on the church steps and dies. And die. His girlfriend winds up at his at his side and cradles him, and the cop comes along, and says, "Oh, uh, uh, who he, is he? What did he do?" And she looks up at him and says, "He used to be a big shot." <laughs> is that Public Enemy? No, that's uh, that's the Roaring Twenties. Roaring Twenty. Okay. Yeah, and and what I always loved about those Warner pictures is they always had one last line that was memorable. Like, yeah, uh, you know, these are the things the dreams are made of. Maltese Falcon. Is this the end of Rico? Edward G. Robinson in the Little Caesar. Okay, um, uh, but the, people don't realize. The Maltese Falcon, the last line Bogart says is, these are the things that dreams are made of, because the guy says, what is it? And he says, this, these are the things that dreams are made of. But the last line in that picture is, I think, from Ward Bond, and the last line is, huh? <laughs> By the way, all the noise you hear, if you hear any noise in back of me, is they are working in our courtyard putting up sheds to protect people from being hit by bricks when they work on the building. So Anyway, so if you hear clattering and noise, I want people to know that. But anyway, and then, uh, uh, so, huh, was the last line in, in the well, Maltese Falcon. Those uh, movies, they had such good writers back then. <clears throat> yeah, and, and uh, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, what was the one for King Kong? Um, it, no, it was Beauty that killed what that killed the Beast. You know, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. The, 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 something like did the fall kill him or something? Somebody. It's always somebody asking a question and somebody giving the answer in most cases, and they became yeah. famous lines. You know. What was the last line of Gone with the Wind? Frankly, Scarlet, I don't give a damn. Oh, wait a minute. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I will go back to Terra Blah Blah for tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how do I remember this and I can't remember my wife's name? Exactly. <laughs> no. no, I, you know, I'm forgetting a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I go, I, and, and all of a sudden I'll get into a discussion with you on something like this and I'm completely lucid. I remember the movie. I remember the line. I remember the actor that said it, you know. Ward Bond <laughs> from Wagon Train. Wagon Train, yeah, but Ward Bond also was, you know, he was in a lot of the Warner Brothers movies, but he was never the star. He was always, you know, the character actor. Uh, Which is the best job to be, actually. Yeah, I think the best movie company of all during that time was Warner Brothers. I think... You know, I, I, MGM did great musicals and stuff like that, and I could uh, I could tell you The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind and blah, 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 blah. But when you look at the output of Warner Brothers, they were a cheaper studio. They did their, most of their pictures in black and white, and they were the masters of black and white, you know? And, and oh, the I, best, yeah. Yeah, and I really liked their pictures. There was just something about them that really worked. And uh, so, you know, whatever. So, uh, have you been working? I always ask you this question. I've been doing a little gig, yes. And yeah. uh, I had fun last week. I uh, The hernia pain was so bad I couldn't stand up. So I did a 35-minute set from a chair. 
Really? But it, How it actually worked. <laughs> the crowd was good. <laughs> well, you know something? Because your material is our lines, not as much as body movement. You know? Yeah. You're a deadpan comic. <laughs> so sitting down doesn't bother you. But hey, the hernia is getting bad. Here, it, folks, I just have days where some days I can barely stand up. And then the, la- the day after that. That was a week ago. I've been fine, but it just comes and goes. 30 years ago, Bubbles and I would be talking, and what we'd be talking about is, did you have sex with anybody lately? <laughs> Hot chick. And he, now, you know, oh, yeah, I went out with this one. Well, I'm doing this one, and blah, 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 blah. And now it's... Now it's our maladies. So how's your hernia? <laughs> How's that cataract? Well, you see, I'm judging my hernia by your hernia. My hernia doesn't hurt, but it bulges. Okay, yours, yeah. yours, you're in great pain enough that you had to sit down during the set. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. Boy, Gramps is getting uh, getting old. I know. Wow, that's amazing. Hmm. Well, um, so you you had, so you, but it was still it was a good set. Worked out okay. Yeah, yeah. Were you opening for anybody, or were you the headliner? I was a headliner, which I don't like, but. Why don't you like being the headliner? That's uh, too much pressure. You got to do a long set. I don't like that. So what? I've always avoided <laughs> avoiding responsibilities. One of my big <laughs> lifelong. But you, we, you don't want to be an opening act. Opening act. That, that's actually the hardest part of the uh, night. Because you got to war- got to warm up the audience. It's your first, and it's always the first uh, job you get in comedy, and it's uh, it's not good. It's. Uh, yeah, the the, uh, the middle is probably the best place to be. Cause that's the easy. That's the one I always like. Because there's no pressure on you. No pressure. Not the money's not great, so you tr- got to get the headline and make decent money. So. And I think uh, you you have a lot of people who use you as an opening act. As, as yeah, I had a great. Actually, I had. Did I tell you I wrote for, opened for Colin Quinn last weekend at uh, Stanford. That was really fun. Yeah, yeah. And does He's he, hilarious. Does he like to use you when he comes to the Bay Area or what? He doesn't come out here much. He's been been 15 years, but he's a great guy and he's hysterically funny. Yeah. Did he, get, did he draw a big audience? He did, yeah. It was a, a nice little theater on the campus. And, uh, yeah, yeah. He just talks about how America's falling apart. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing about Colin Quinn, he's one of those comics that's been around forever. Yeah. You know, and and he has name recognition, but a lot of times don't, most people don't know what they recognize him for. You know, I mean, he's, he's not one of those comics that's an established name. He's not a Chappelle, you know. No, but he had uh, that tough crowd on Comedy Central, which is very funny. But, uh, yeah, twenty years ago, and yeah, but I mean, he—I I remember him as being very funny. I think I did him on my show a couple of times. You must have, yeah, I must have. You know, I don't. Sometimes I don't. It's funny. I don't remember all the people that I had on. I'm sure you do. I don't remember them all either, but uh, I, I'd love to see a list of everyone that you had on since the '80s. That would be fun. Well, I mean, I you know, my one I I always have somebody I've, I've often mentioned this story before. So please stop me if you've heard it before. Or just turn off your thing or speed up. You can speed up this interview. Uh, but uh, uh, Lewis Black, who said to me, uh, it's good to have you on the show. I've wanted to have you on for a long time. And he said, well, I was on your show way back when, back in San Francisco. He said, but you wouldn't remember me then. I wasn't screaming. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, I, uh, I, you know, I couldn't remember him, but I took it. I mean, if he, if he knew he was there, then I guess he was there, you know. Uh, but there, there are a lot of people I do forget. I and, tend to remember the non-comics that you had on the show. I, uh, I remember... Uh, Got a great director that did uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. <laughs> well, that's the worst interview I ever did. Really? Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. That was, uh, that was uh, what's his name? I see. Here Robert I Wise? Well, Robert Wise. Uh, I had Robert Wise on the show. And I talked to him about, uh, I think, uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still. I talked to him about a bunch of other, West Side Story, which he did. And, uh, you know, about those things. 
I had com- I did not know and I had, I had hadn't didn't have the information in my back pocket. He was the editor on Citizen Kane. Yeah. And I asked him nothing about Citizen nothing. Kane. Oh wow. <laughs> That might be the greatest editing job ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if he did nothing else in his life, editing Citizen Kane is really important. And I'm going, so uh, with West Side Story, how did you cast handling, you know, and and, and they there stood still, oh, I love that movie. You know, but he did, he edited Citizen Kane. So, wow. So that was my... Uh, that was the worst interview I've ever done. I remember the oddest one was Camille Paglia. When, uh, remember that one? Yeah, well, she actually liked me, didn't she? But she did, but she was she came in, and when she saw the live audience, she was so freaked out, you had to take her into a private studio. You had to go her. into another studio and do the interview. Yeah. That was October of 92. Wow, yes, I remember that. And we went into one of the side studios and right, typed, uh-huh. typed it in from there. But I remember she liked me. Yeah, she's very interesting. And she doesn't like many people. No. <laughs> you know, but she liked me. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got along. Um, who else do you remember? David Cassidy. Wow, did I have David Cassidy on? <laughs> he was just... I don't think he heard anything. He was just talking and just... <laughs> cut everybody out of his uh, view. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, that's the hardest. If people say to me, what's the hardest interview to do? And I say, that's a person who comes in and has his own agenda. Yeah, and he you, did. You know, and, and no matter what you ask them, they're always getting back to that agenda. And and that makes it very difficult. That's one of the reasons I never used to like doing politicians. Hated doing politicians was because they'd never give me a straight answer. No matter how many times I would go back and ask them over and over again the same question, trying to get some kind of answer, they would always know, and if it was an embarrassing one especially, they would know how to divert it. So you never could get a straight answer out of a politician. And when I did get a politician on now and then, who I could get a straight answer out of, uh, I was pleasantly surprised, you know. Yeah, they're they're the worst. So. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, some of them uh, were. Who was that guy? God, I'm trying to remember his name now. Who uh, who he finally went to jail. He was running. I can't remember. I'm not. I'm not even going to try, folks. But I mean, occasionally I've had politicians I've liked because I could ask them anything and they would answer it. They wouldn't divert to something else. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, and then there's always a person who's pushing their book, you know, and and you've got to sit there trying to get an interview out of a guy who's there for only one reason, to sell a book. And I don't mind helping them sell a book, but let's do a few other things too, you know. Mm-hmm. Let's so, see, you had uh, Stella Stevens. Did I really? Yeah, she was hot. Was she in the studio? Yeah. See, I don't remember it. I, don't, I absolutely do not remember interviewing Stella Stevens. And I think the biggest was the morning you had Tori Amos and Jackie Chan. Well, now that one I remember, and I'll tell you why I remember it. I had Jackie Chan on, and I had Tori Amos on. Tori Amos at the time was like, especially women loved her music. Yeah. They just adored her. And she was coming on to also play some music, too, while she was on the show. And Jackie Chan at that time was becoming the biggest action star in the business. We had an we had this small audience only held about fifty, right? The studio, uh, <laughs> not that day. <laughs> that day they were lined up around the block. Oh, people were offering me money to get in. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Oh boy, that, yeah. I, they, I came in, they were, I'm parking, they're lined around the block. I'll never forget that day, though. I mean, literally lined up around the block. And that was a long block, by the way. I mean, uh, if we could have held that thing at a 5,000-seat studio, and we probably still would have had people waiting to get in. It was amazing. It was just amazing. That one I will, 
You can mention that. I will never forget that. That was an amazing morning. And then there was Tori Amos. We did a show. You did a live show in Berkeley, and she was on that one, too. Remember? Yeah, that, yeah, that one, Penn Jillette, I think, was on it, too. And, and Paul Provenza. And Paul. Geez, you, God damn your memory. Your memory is just, it, it's insane. <laughs> It I was selling Parkit Whore. I sold a bunch of Parkit Whore t-shirts that morning. I remember <laughs> yes, that. Right. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown made money off t-shirts that said Parkit <laughs> Whore. Whore. Well, because that was your catchphrase. That was the catchphrase. Yeah, it was the catchphrase, and along yeah. with several <laughs> others. Pen, yeah, Pendulette and Provenza was great. It was that was those were fun shows. See, I mean, I, I, I will mention this and we'll have to get off. Bubbles uh, would sometimes hook onto a line and it became a catchphrase and nobody would understand where the catchphrase came from. Yeah, pop the hood. <laughs> well, the, the most famous one for you, I think, was butter. Butter. <laughs> now, the reason for that, see, nobody knows what we're saying. How is butter funny? <laughs> see, if you know what the joke is, Fuck it, I'm going over on time, but the hell with it. I, I love you, and I, <laughs> I hate my audience. Okay, so uh, it, 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 there was a whole thing I used to do about let's just do punchlines, you know, like that goes for your cat too, <laughs> right? Now, if you don't know the joke, you're not going to laugh as hard. But if you know the joke, all you have to hear is the punchline, and in Bubbles' case. He had this one word that was a punchline. Not to my joke. N not to, it, well, it wasn't a, it was, it, it was a common joke. And the, the catchphrase, do you remember what the one word was? Come on. Butter. Butter. Yeah. Now, that comes from a joke, which is, he's fat and he does cocaine. What's he cutting his cocaine <laughs> with? with. Butter. <laughs> now, and also you walk into the line too. Butter. But yeah, you really had to emphasize that, and then I, everybody started saying butter for the next two years. I remember that. Yeah. So I mean, you you could just go on stage and go butter, and everybody yeah. would laugh. What time is it, butter? Anyway, we've run out of time here. God, I love talking to you. I just can't get enough of you. Uh, I th I'm sure you can get enough of me, but I can't get enough of you. You are just... <laughs> and you bring back so many memories for me. And uh, Estella Stevens, huh? Yeah. Jeez, almighty. You know. Hmm. Well. I think uh, Kim Novak, too. Oh, Kim Novak, I remember, was on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always I always get them a little bit when they've gone to seed, though. You know, I ne never get them in their prime when I can <laughs> yeah. go go home and you know masturbate to having seen them in my studio. But we got them when we thought, well, maybe now I have a chance. <laughs> well, you know, it's like my old line about, uh, you know, I always wanted to look like Tony Curtis, and now I do. <laughs> you know? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry uh, Bubbles. I got a hernia and I got allergies. Brown. Butter. Butter. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, and that's Larry Bubbles Brown, as always. Larry Bubbles Brown, yes, always. We love Larry. We absolutely love and adore Larry, and I say that every time, and I mean it. I mean it, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. Who else would we have on this program without getting any video out of him? Well, it's him because he's, uh, he's you know, he's, he's a Luddite. And then maybe that's one of the things we love about him. I think he feels that if he were to get himself a smartphone and were able to call us and show us video of himself, he'd lose his reputation, you know that sort of thing but anyway i think it's time for us so we have a couple of people waiting to come on this is getting pretty dismal when we first start but it gets better as we go along hopefully uh but let me admit all these people that are uh, are here let me uh there there they go there they yeah there's uh, josh wheeler and there's jeff stein and there's alan and uh, there's me hi there That's everybody right. how are you Hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Good. 
good. Okay, well, thank you, and uh, that's it for hey. our show tonight. You know, <laughs> I'm, uh, uh, I was not going to come on, but I knew Josh would be here, and I love hearing him talk about Congress and politics. Why weren't you going to call? I'm kidding. I just. I was going to be here. You were going to be. I, I like when Josh gets on the show and and talks about you know the Congress and what's going on there because he follows it better than anybody. Else. I don't think he follows the Congress that closely. Do you, Josh? You, you're more a Supreme Court guy. You're more. Uh, I follow up all the relevant news in general. I mean, yeah. I watch. I have C-SPAN on a lot. I watch a lot of their programming to when I work on things or whatever and yeah I hear some of those guys go on there and give their speeches a lot and what roll my you... eyes or laugh or whatever some of them are so fake I, I'm, I'm rolling my eyes at everything now I really <laughs> am I, you know I mean a pox on both their houses you know I just uh, it, the, the Democrats hmm. don't put their foot down enough and the Republicans uh, just are, are just trying to ruin this country they're, they, you know, I don't think they have any idea what the Constitution is. I don't think they have any idea what's going. I mean, I, they, they just, they just, they're horrible fucking human beings. To me, it, I agree. <laughs> to me, it, you know, when the Democrats put a foot down, they usually trip over it. Yeah. Lately. Yeah, and and so far oh. as the the Democrats are concerned, what Chuck Schumer's a good idea, Nancy Pelosi's a good idea. You know, now um, that's probably time they moved away from that same group. I mean, they, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's, but it's not going to happen because they have control. They no, it's, it's right. They it's, control, no, it's probably not. They control the field, you know? So. Yeah, but I mean, it's, I mean, hmm. you know, I'll be honest with you. I, I have a hard time listening to Nancy Pelosi. I mean, I just, I don't want to hear her talk. Or I just don't. I'm tired of hearing Biden. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I... He's just around and does what he does, and I mean he's the president. So when he talks, they're they're gonna talk about it and put him on TV, and you know it's fine. I mean, you know, look, I'm I'm careful not to, to get too critical of of Joe Biden on certain things, even if I don't have this high approval of him or whatever, because it's just important to remember that this is just what we're gonna have to accept to get through and try to get. The country back on track it's not that he's going to get it there but he's going to start it hopefully mm -hmm. on that path because you know the the alternative at least the, right now that was presented to us was to keep trump and to me that was not an acceptable alternative i mean mm -hmm. i'd rather have a waffling biden i guess than i would a, a trump you know and that's you know that's me because things have not been perfect but things haven't been you know horrible i mean i get there's a lot of issues inflation and whatnot that were probably going to manifest no matter who was the president was i mean because of the past economic situation with the pandemic issues and supply chain issues and all that this stuff was you know fairly inevitable really no matter who was the president or who controlled this, that, house, yeah, I, I would together. say you're right yeah. on that. But last night I was saying that I don't hold the economy against Biden. I don't hold, you know, there are people that even hold the uh, the uh, uh, the lack of baby formula to Biden. Right. And, and though none of those are Biden's fault, okay? Yeah. But what is his fault is he's failed to do anything about it. Well, yeah, I mean, right. I, you know, I can't give any argument that some of the things that have come up I do not care much for the response um, sometimes the response in substance or sometimes the response in just his language or whatever you know um, but I don't know that Trump would have done anything that was anywhere in our approval area either so I mean you know we, we're just basically right now oh, no, Trump, we, Trump, we, Trump he, let's, let's be honest about it Trump was against this country he wanted he, he wanted to dismantle this const this uh, this republic is what he wanted. Yeah, to I mean, do. yeah, I'm certainly, you know, depending on who you ask, you're going to get different answers about that. But I I mean, I believe that 
that Trump, to me, even if you like his policies, I just still do not understand why people couldn't find someone else who was respectable and who could accomplish those goals in the same way who wasn't basically a fascist. And I mean, that is what All right, now, he's trying to turn that party into. Okay, so if we were to find a Republican who isn't that way, who is he or she? I don't know that I... I, I mean, I... Huh? Teddy Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll think about it. I mean, it's it's hard for me to give you a name because I have disdain for some of the, the people that they would want, you know? I mean, look, I think Ted Cruz is one of the fakest people alive. Oh, he's, he's terrible. You know? Terrible. I mean, he's, he's, he's very... Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know they love DeSantis, but I, I mean, I, I just think... I see him as just like Trump. He'll say whatever people want him to say, you know? Um... Uh, of the rest of their major players, you, you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't respect Romney at all. I know you guys have some for him. I have none for him. Well, I, I mean, I if I'm going to find one Republican who at least is somewhat acceptable, it would be Romney. I'd never vote for him. I, I don't know. You know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think he'd kiss anybody's ass he could to, to get people to think that. I well, mean, well, I'll tell you, one of the stupidest you know, political people in the country right now is Elon Musk. Did you see that uh, that tweet he put out? I I try. I, look, I know you guys love him. No, I, I, I do I, not care. I do not care for him. I never have. I think that he. I think he's a whiner, and I think most of the time he acts like a, a fucking baby. Well, I, I think I, Elon, I Elon Musk is one of those people who may accomplish good things, but at some point in his life, someone really needs to fucking slap him in the face and say, look, you know, there are a lot of people in this country that have a lot of fucking problems that you don't understand, and you need to start understanding them because you've gotten to be important enough that you can have an effect on people's lives just by opening your mouth. Yeah, and yeah you need you're, to you're, understand you're right, that. you're right. Uh, but I don't, I, you know, I, I'm not, my my uh, caring about uh, Musk is what he's done with the space program. Mm, I, I, I think right. he's revolutionized the space program. Also, it, it's come to cars. The Tesla was the first uh, electric vehicle to gain any kind of traction in this country. And it's something that has long been needed. And if everybody had an electric car right now, we wouldn't have the gas crisis. Okay. I would. Yeah. I would bet ten years from now, half of the vehicles on the street are going to be electric. Oh, That's I would. I would say eighty percent. If okay. if, and go. I think the only gas ones left, it'll be like Cuba. You know, or really old cars that have been restored. The delivery vehicles, maybe, or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but I mean, so I mean, I think this man. For the society has contributes is contributing stuff, which I think is going to help save us as a planet. Okay. Um, now, do I like the rest of him? No. Uh, you know the stupid thing he came out with the other day saying, uh, "I'm not going to vote Democratic anymore. I'm only going to vote Republican." Uh, because I don't like what the Democrats have become. I used to think they were the nice party, and they're not anymore. Well, I don't know that I disagree with that. I think maybe the Democrats are too nice, you know, and that's why they get their asses handed to them. But uh, uh, when he said, I'm going to vote Republican, I mean, come on, that makes them, you know, I, I wrote on my uh, uh, Facebook page that I would rather probably die before I voted for a Republican, and I'm not that hot about the Democrats right now. You well, know. right. I mean, that's, you know, it, that look, as you know very well from our conversations, I'm not a big fan of, you know, a lot of them either. And I mean, I, I think the worst thing they can do is 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 maintain power and, then, and, and keep Schumer and Pelosi and all the other players where they are. It's time to roll out some some different people. And I, that doesn't necessarily mean younger. I, I don't care if they're younger. I don't care if they're older. I, I just think that they need some better communicators. And they need a couple heavy-weighted, you know, people who can run their well, mouth. You know, and get the question is, the question is, you know, you're, you're, when you have a job opening, uh, you're going to only get the best people that you're attracting. All right. And the fact is, what are we attracting to that job? 
nothing but scuzzballs. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you look at, t take the most common congressman, okay, who goes in there and he isn't worth a p uh, the shoes on his feet, okay? Back and by the eight. time he's through with 10 years in the Congress, he's a millionaire. How does that happen? On a, on a, yeah. uh, when, when all they pay you is about $150,000 a year, you know. Yeah, it's in that range, right? Yeah, it's in that range. Where, where, did, just, where did a million bucks you come know. from? You didn't, I mean, you didn't eat? You know. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the leadership that the Democratic Party has now is just, look, I mean, we don't have to go over, you know, their record. And I mean, look, I know there's been some accomplishments and, and it's fine. I just think that it's maybe time, you know, to go. I mean, they, they just always have the same message and, and everything. And it's just, you know, and maybe the Republicans do too. That's whatever, but we're not talking about them. I just... You know, anything that happens, it's, it's you know, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer with, oh, I, we, we should investigate. All the, I mean, people, they just get tired of it. I mean, you know, just, can you just go fix some problems, maybe, you know, right today? Hey, we stop I mean, investigating the oil well, You know, now. here here's what I find so incredibly stupid. Um, you're in the Congress. You're voting for who's going to, you know, the Electoral College's putting in their their votes and stuff and you're sitting there uh, about to say well who the new president of the United States is and all of a sudden a bunch of these people at the urging of the president of the United States are attacking the capital where you are holding your get together and your mm -hmm. lives are now in jeopardy <laughs> and you're running for the basement okay to be taken care of by the Secret Service and keeping those the, the wolves away from the door, okay? Yep. You've gone through that, and then when it's all over, you go, oh, there was nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You were shitting your pants while it was going on, you know, but yeah. you but when, now it's like, oh, no, 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 Trump didn't do that, oh, no. These were just some nice people who wanted to come by and pay a visit to their, yeah. to their Congress. You know. Yeah, I mean, they're the, uh, I, you know, none of us like hypocrisy among, you know, anybody, but especially in members of Congress. Now, uh, I think that over the years that I have pointed out when I see some hypocrisy from a Democratic uh, politician or whatever, mm -hmm. but I honestly do. I mean, in my own mind, I honestly do see the, the current Republican Party for sure as a party that that has that problem more than anybody because you know i mean i think i read an article about you know maybe one or two days ago now about all these companies on wall street and their investors are now moving to place this huge weight in their prospectuses of how they invest about how companies affect society and the earth so they're really going to give a lot heavier weight to our companies are they green do they recycle? You know what I'm saying? This big movement. And and all these Republican politicians, you know, the Ted Cruz's and all of them, were crying about it. And this is so wrong. And we should get rid of these. We should boycott these people. And we should kick, you know, make this rule. Make, and it's like, why? Because business people have made their own decision. They had decided that that's what's important to them because their customers have told them that's what is important to us. You know what I mean? That's called the free market. Even if you hear about green, this, that, and the other, and you roll your eyes and you think it's the dumbest thing in the world, okay, fine. Then you're allowed to think that. But so are all these other folks, and many of them have decided that that is what is important to them. And now these Wall Street bankers and these hedge funds managers and things like that have said, I need to be weighing this a lot a lot more than we did in the past 10 years ago we didn't give any shits about this we only cared about the money mm -hmm. now we still only care about the money but we have to take some steps to it make it look a certain way or to satisfy certain people's uh demands or desires mm -hmm. well that's the market right right i mean so why are republicans crying about that i mean i don't I just I read this article and I think why do they I get maybe they don't like it but why are they acting like it's wrong or against the law or should be against the law or anything in that 
in that realm. It, it's That's what the people say they wanted. They're all about democracy and freedom of choice and a free market. But they're not for the United they're, 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 right. for, for, they're not for this democracy. They're against this democracy. They yeah. want they want to take away people's right to vote. They're trying to screw up uh, the uh, the way we count the votes in this country. Yeah. I mean, they're doing everything they can to undermine this democracy. And then they talk about how make America great again. What do you mean? <laughs> what, what, I mean, to right. begin and, with, you know, tell me, tell me when America was really great, that's, and that's you know? what I'm saying is, you know, and I can tell I, you when I, Finland was really great, or when Sweden was really great. You know, there's some pretty great countries out there yeah. that haven't made trouble for anybody. You know, well, I mean, and, you know, and this I, country, I still, you know, I, I think America, you know, has had a great times and and, and still does okay well, let me ask you will. this specifically when did it have great times i i, not, I don't not know my, not, I think, not my lifetime oh I, I don't i mean i don't know i i will really agree how about I you mean, jeff how about how about in your lifetime jeff have there been some great times for this country have there been times when this country was great again did you hear me jeff Oh, you got you didn't you don't have your mic on. Oh, uh, there you go. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I it's hard. It's I hard mean, to in say your lifetime, you you're kind of a, a little bit up in years like me, but I can't think of a time that it was ever really great. You know, I suppose maybe after right after World War II, after we had uh, gone to war and come back and felt like we had saved the world, which we weren't the only ones that saved the world, but we sure acted like it, you know? Um, yeah, don't you don't you believe that we made a major contribution? Oh, yeah, but, the, ask, that? but ask the Russians, and I'm not talking about the Russians right now because the country's nuts right now, right. but you go back a couple of years and you ask them about the Americans, and they're really upset by the fact that the Americans kept running around going, we won the war for democracy, yeah, you know, course. because they lost seven, they lost what, uh, 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 25 million people, the Russians in that war, and we only lost 500,000. And the reason they lost 25 million was because we didn't build a second front to help them win the war yeah. against the I, Russians, you know. No, so no. that's why. I, I, but, yeah. but no, but that's I mean, but the Russians. That's the one of the reasons the Russians have always been pissed at the United States was over well, they're, that. They're entitled to their interpretation of that, but I, that's I wouldn't read the facts that way. But, mm -hmm. but I, I mean, I mean we're doing something on on the on the West Coast. I'll call it. Yeah, but I mean, we, okay, we on the other hand, know. we came you back can't here. Forget about that. We came back here. Tell me a just war we fought since then. <clears throat> you know, and we've had a few of them. We've had the uh, we had the Vietnam War. We've had the the Korean War. We've had the war in the Middle East. Name one of those that we were we were justified in being there. How about how about giving an attaboy to this government for supporting Israel all these years? Uh, I can't say I'm exactly for that either. Okay. I think what they did is they took a side and created a much more horrible situation there. Uh, uh, I, I think we, we, rather than take a side in the Mideast, should have taken the big brother approach and kind of put both our hands out and say, okay, now, let's, let's calm down here, you know, and dealt with it that way instead of uh, coming to the defense of Israel. I mean, come on, let's be honest about Israel for a second. How did it come to be? A war. No. What? No. A war, right? No. 1948. No, there wasn't a war in 1948. No. No. What happened in 1948? Do you know? I wasn't around. Well, then how can you make statements like you just because made? Because I heard there was an Israeli war that made Israel. No, no. Would, would you care to tell them, Josh? What well, happened? I mean, a bunch of know, Jews I, left left Europe and came down to, to yeah. Uh, I mean, Israel. Israel was you know created in a, uh, through a confluence of events of you know I guess in symbolized form 
by people just showing up and saying we're going to live here. <laughs> it's kind of like the Mexicans coming over the border right now. So many well, showed yeah. up at the same time that the only thing they wanted would do about it was they simply said, oh, well, well, we'll let you form the state of Israel. Well, the problem was there were already people living there. And prior to uh, a lot of the, uh, there was, a, there was a, um, a, a guy by the name of Balfour uh, who did a declaration that uh, Israel should be for the Jews. And he was, Balfour wasn't even Jewish. He was a British uh, uh, political wonk. And, and he, um, uh, up until that point, the Jews were getting along fine with the Arabs in the area. They felt like they were really? a 1948 and 49 was a war with the Arabs. No, it was a little yeah. later than that. I'm looking at it right now. The, uh, uh, oh, you're talking, you know, I'm talking about what happened right after the war when they oh, came okay. there. Okay, well, about yes, there was a war no, that was caused at that point, but that war absolutely. was caused. And Israel became a state. No, Israel became a state before that war. Right? I don't think so. No, I, I don't know the it, date it, of their incorporation. 1948 Israeli war. Yes, but when was Israel formed? Uh, well, 1948. Not, no, it wasn't. The Israeli War of Independence. Go to the History Channel. I hit, I hit a YouTube thing by accident. I think you got it wrong. The creation of Israel here. Uh, May 14th, when did When did the UN declare that Israel was a state? I, I'm, I'm, 1948. Okay. Yeah. And right after that was when they started to go to war against the Arabs. Prior to that, there wasn't a war against the Arabs going on. 47 that, to 49, there was a war with the Arabs, Israel. Arabs. Well, that that didn't... That didn't didn't create the state of Israel. The Israel was created by the UN. Right. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And and right. and, and the, uh, the war with the Arabs had nothing to do with it. It wasn't like uh, you know they were trying I, to rest the. I, what I earlier said was they became a state, and we helped them in 1948. And you said no, it didn't happen. But it's right here. It's I history. said they became a state. Yeah, right, 1948. Yeah. yeah. And there was a war from 47 to 49 between the Israelis. Well, and there was the there Arabs. were there were hostilities going on between the two of them and and what happened was the UN took sides. Okay. And they and well, they sided on the side of the Jews for Israel, right? No, they um, uh, uh, Jews is a bad uh, please don't call call the people in Israel Jews. All right? But most of them are. Uh, no. Most of them are not, you know. There are a lot of, of uh, there were a lot of Arabs living there. That you know that what was supposed to happen mm -hmm. is that whole country was supposed to live in harmony, but somehow <laughs> they weren't. It wasn't meant to happen, because the Israelis weren't going to let it happen. They were they were rounding up uh, Arabs and putting them in camps. <laughs> Did you know that? Uh, yeah, there was a war going on. Why not? <laughs> What do you think, I, I Jeff? Give... Jeff just said, well, in Israel, see? I, you know, in 1948, 19 whatever, I was too young to even know what Israel was. Oh, I know. So I went to, history, I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to our, our Sunday school at the Marin Jewish Community Center, and we all brought quarters to, to plant a tree in Israel. I remember yeah. that. That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. I, I remember that. God. Yeah. I did that when I was a kid, too. Yeah, when I, I did that. Too. Too. <laughs> but uh, as compared to most, but I actually went to Israel twice mm -hmm. to do uh, a project for, for them. Um, it was interesting people. Very nice. Interesting people? Yeah. Yeah, different. Most Israelis I've met are arrogant son of a bitches. Mm, it's a little bit of that. A little bit of that, a lot of that. Mm. Ask any American woman who's dated an Israeli, and they'll yeah. tell you they were the most arrogant guys they ever dated. You know. Yeah. All yeah, I'm saying, all say I'm saying, is that? what happened in Israel was that you had people living there 
who had been living there for what, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years in the form of the Arabs. The Jews also lived there. There was a Jewish population there. And for years, they got along great until Balfour came along and started stirring things up. Up until that point, they, the, the Jews in Israel considered themselves kind of a separate kind of Jew. I mean, they were a, 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 a Jew that lived in that, in that Arab land and it was a, it, they got along fine. They got along great. And then people came in and started making trouble. People who had no business making trouble. And it was it was really it was really sad what happened because and now then all of a sudden here come all these Jews from Israel, uh, from uh, Europe, going into Haifa Harbor and so on and saying we want in we want in we want in, and the people who had been living there for all those centuries are suddenly displaced. The Arabs are suddenly told, hey, you're not, you know, this is not your country any longer. This belongs to the, uh, the Jews, the European Jews. Well, you know, how would you feel if that happened to you? You're not exactly gonna take to that. That's what happens in wars, though. But it's very nice of you to say that, but also at the same time, you don't do something to try and create a war. And that's what we did in that area. Unless you're Republican. We created the unrest in that part of the, of the world. There were solutions to the problem, and they were, they were, they were uh, 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 many different solutions to that problem, none of which we explored. Okay. Instead, we just said, ah, give it to the Jews. They're making too much noise. Let's shut them up. You know? And, and I, uh, I often felt that I felt bad for the for the uh, for the um, um, uh, for the uh, uh, Arabs in the area, you know, uh, especially uh, the um, what do you call it? Uh, I'm trying to think of who they are. Um, Palestinians. Palestinians. Yeah, I mean, terrible. I don't know why they can't all get along. Well, because we created a situation where they can't. That's the problem. Well, they're all the same people. Yeah. Hello, Tony. What's up? So I hear you got cancer? You know, it actually went better than I thought, Alex. Yeah, I'm not, it, yeah. the, I don't want I heard you were going crazy over this thing. Because you know, I was so annoyed. Uh, meaning like, they released it in the, they released it in the patient portal before I, you know, before the doctor can call me. So it was no big usually deal. Usually they don't, usually they don't let you know yeah, until the- normally you- your doctor should release that and explain. Yeah, what's going and they on. don't do it until the doctor has released it to be released to you. Well, I asked like him that, life. Alex, and you know what he told me? He he apologized when we went to see him. I told Shecky this too because I called him, and I asked the doctor. He apologized. He says, you know, he says, when you sign up for the patient portal, he said, when I when I read your chart. By law, I have to update it right after I read it. It's a, By the way, in case people don't know what we're talking about, he had uh, he had some bad uh, tests for prostate. He went to a Chinese restaurant and, and well, anyway, yeah. so so finally, your doctor explained it to you, right? Yeah, he told me to calm down. He says this is not going to kill you. It's the best bad news, good news, bad news I can give you. He says it's low, low grade. He it's says, so, he, so I don't want to get like too into it. I can tell you off it, but he says, I said, so he says, he gave me, he says, he, he says, you don't have to treat it if you don't want, but if you do, my sister says, I'd rather treat it, but I'm not going to rush into it. So I'll do some research. He's, He's still getting another sister. test back, but he said, don't worry. Yeah, so so. It's, it's the most favorable outcome for prostate cancer is a three plus three. Yeah. I mean, Same. I did have a three plus four, but he said it was borderline six. And he's just researching. He says it's so low grade. He says because I was reading up on it. I mean, I was I was telling Chuck. I know he said that the number, the small the number in the first is better than a, the other number, the three cells. He says you got nothing to worry about. He says this is not. You know what he told me? What you said, Alex. This is not going to kill you. He said. Yeah. No. I, I, yeah, asked, I, I looked at my doctor. My, they're gonna they're gonna do my, a my observation. Uh, Wait. Can, uh, I, can I talk for a second? Yeah. Get out. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. <laughs> Uh, uh, what, I was going to call you, but I don't know. Well, no, my doctor, my doctor uh, just simply said to me, he, you know, my oncologist, when I said to him, mm -hmm. is this going to kill me? He looked at me like I was crazy. That's with, what he did to me. a funny Alex. look on his face and went, no. He yeah. said, you know what he told my sister? He says, your brother's anxious. I was going to I was gonna call you, but I want to bother you, Alex. He says, go. He knew I had two dogs. He says, go get another dog. Relax. 
So he says, you're not dying from this, he said. Just relax. <laughs> well, I wouldn't get a dog because maybe you will die and then the dog won't have anybody to feed him. But, you know. Well, it's, his it's, girlfriend can take him. Yeah, <laughs> they got yeah. two. Yeah, no, I, I, I would have told you the same thing that, that Alan just told you. You know, it's, uh, but you had a 3-4. Yeah, but he yeah. said it's borderline. He says, don't panic It's because it's more in the 60s and it's not aggressive. I was going to, I had the thing, he had the thing on him and he says, he says, you got nothing to worry about. Yeah, so. I, he I, said, if it, even if it was a 4-3, he said that you had, he wouldn't panic. Yeah, he they said. just wanted to fry my uh, my prostate. That's all. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. I mean, I'm not happy about it because Tony he says, if I have to, if I can give this news all, all day, he says, he's got, he's got nothing to worry about. He says. Yeah, I would say yeah. T- t- take it easy. Don't and and, and don't. You know I was gonna ask you, Alex, and I asked the doctor. What were you gonna ask me? You were gonna ask them. With an yeah, because I wrote my out. sister. Me wrote down notes, and I asked my sister's friend this too. She's a nurse at NYU. I I was reading on. I even told this to Shecky. I was gonna ask you this, Alex. They were saying on some medical articles, and they were legitimate articles from like uh, doctors from NYU Mount Sinai. Yeah, so yeah, what's hey, go on, get to the point. They were we have other things to talk about here. Six, Alex, what? The, the guy who created this chart, they were saying that they don't consider Gleason 6 a cancer, really, under the microscope, some doctors, a lot of them. Well, it, no, no matter what, take your doctor's advice and, you know, yeah. you know and if you, if you feel you want to be on the safe side, you could do the radiation, you know. Well, I think that's what I'm going to do, Alex. I'm going to do, do radiation. I'm going to do external one if I do it. Uh, well, you know, wait, wait until it moves up, Tony. No, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to rush into it, Alex. Oh, yeah. Alan, I apologize. I didn't. He blocked me. I was joking with you. I told Phil, Alex, can I say something about Phil without getting in trouble, Alan? I was talking to Phil. He's been a very good person to talk to other than Shaq. Well, because I won't talk you, to Alex. you. <laughs> you know what Phil said? He may get mad if I say this. Alex, I got to ask you this. He was saying that he buys underwear for $35. I don't have shirts that cost $35. Who does? Phil. Oh well, he's oh, ha- I, I, no. I have yeah. to. I have to stand up for Phil because he he gets the ones with cocaine in them. I was gonna. So. I thought he was joking with me. It's like he, joking. He I think jokes like this. Okay, okay, Tony. Tony we've done enough. Work, Tony. We've done yeah, enough with your prostate. Thank you. You oh, and I was gonna cry, but I appreciate Alex. I keep you up to date. I'm sorry yeah, to yeah. call you. Keep but me up to date. Let me know if you have any problems. Give me a call. Not yeah. often. Not also, I know. I told Chuck I have his number saved, but I don't want to bother him all the time. You know, I'm, I would have I'm, called you in the office, put you on speaker, ask him some questions. He's my dad. I recorded my okay, second. Okay, all right, calm down. Did, did right, you send you. him any coffee, Alan? No, no, I, no. <laughs> no I Sorry, guys. Care. Jesus, you know, he'll die of prostate cancer, but be moving for 20 Probably days afterwards. Days, you know. Uh, here comes, oh, hey, here's our crowd. Here comes Patrick. Hey, we don't oh, see I Patrick that often. Hello, Patrick. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Always good to see him. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, how did your? Uh, uh, let me ask Kevin. How did your uh, school go tonight with the, uh, with the uh, 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 music and the video making and so on? Did you get your iPad working? Yeah, it turned out to be a recital for my daughter, so it wasn't as big of a deal. Yeah. But it worked fine. It worked fine. Yeah. What? No problems tonight. So you don't know what the problems were last night. Yeah, it was just a simple crash, I guess. Yeah. 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 How you doing? Time, how, you, how you doing, Patrick? I am alive and kicking. That's well, good. that's better than being dead and not kicking. Alive and kicking is a start in the right direction. Yeah. Well, if I'm kicking, I must be having spasms. So. <laughs> um, do you uh, or your nuts are caught in the wheelchair ow that sounds horrible well he had something like that happen right a couple of weeks ago something like that uh, oh you don't need to talk about that yeah well, I, I got caught last Saturday yeah yeah your nut sack got caught in the wheelchair yeah, last yeah, Saturday yeah yeah in fact he oh, showed us a picture he, he showed you show, kind of showed us a picture of it oh no yeah. Sorry, I brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, come on. That that's one of those stories where you go. Uh-huh. Nothing yeah. is sacred yeah. on the show. Everything <laughs> is sacred on the show. Um, <laughs> hello, uh, Brian. How are you? Warriors won. I'm very good right now. <laughs> uh, the Warriors won, huh? 
Yeah, except I lost my tooth. I broke my tooth. He broke your hockey. Wait, but he broke his tooth. He said. My tooth. What happened? The Warriors came back. Warriors came back and won, so I was happy. They're down by nineteen. Wait, wait, wait! wait. Forget about the Warriors. You know, I played hockey. Yeah, let's talk about your teeth now. What, yeah, what what happened with your tooth? Did you have a pencil? It it was a it was a not an implant, but you know they shaved off. It was a cap, and somehow that cap sort of wore down, and it, it was sort of like on the edge anyway, and so they uh, popped it out last week. So they popped what out? The whole tooth? Yeah, because the tooth had broke since it was sort of small and glued on there for a while. The cap, so. Oh, okay, Brian, so they, what, they, they got to do another. They I'm got, sorry, I got in a fight. You need to come I got up in a really massive fight. I, well, I'd hate to go. see the other three guy. Three guys had me down, and one guy was beating me up, and that's better. Yeah, yeah, and, but and the other guy stuck your balls in a vice grip. No, never yeah, but no, but here's hey, here's hey, the hey, here's hey, the. Can you go through my fake tooth, please? So what ha- so, so what happens? You're making a new crown and stuff, and you're waiting on that. Now they're gonna do an implant. Yeah. Oh, they did. It wasn't an implant. I see. No, it was not an implant, but then it broke off and there's nothing left there. So, oh. yeah, so they're going to do an implant. Oh, but, yeah, man. they um, the, we were talking about your teeth stuff. I almost showed you that day. But... Everybody I know is missing front teeth like uh, 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 Kravitz is, too. Oh, the only I'm thing off. that bothers me I'm is, though, when you've got a, a front tooth missing, and so they're going to do a, an implant, that's fine. But that Sounds takes that takes painful. that takes a period of like six months. It's first it's three months to, for the heal the, the tooth is pulled you see to that? heal, and then uh, it's another three months after they screw the implant in for it to get solid. But they don't have anything they put in the meantime, you know. Oh, oh, Adrian's back. I always wanted there. to fuck with my dentist and walk in there just after eating about five Oreo cookies and then open my mouth. (laughs) What I I did with my dentist, I actually had an appointment on April Fool's Day and I opened my mouth and had the Dracula teeth in there. So what are they was so so what are they gonna do to make sure is make you cosmetically look okay for the next six months? He's look at that, he's perfect already. Magic. What is that? It's almost like a bridge. So it's a tooth, and then they have the plastic around it, and they shaved it down so I could stick it in. Oh, well, wait a minute. That's called a clipper. It's called a clipper, and I I, I asked my dentist, could I have one? And he went, no, we don't believe in clippers because you could swallow them. And I said, so I take a dump, and it's gone again, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's like dump, and you stick it back in your mouth. Well, You know, because they they take out the teeth, and that they take out the tooth, and they say everything looks fine, so, you know, here you wear this for four weeks and all that stuff. But, you know, try to keep it out as much as you can. So I go to Lodi, and when I go to Lodi, we're still wearing masks because it's manufacturing. So I have my tooth out, and I have my mask on all day, and nobody knows. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Thank God there's a there's the, the virus is good for something. <laughs> yeah, you know. exactly. Uh, well, it sounds like you'll be in less pain than I went through having two wisdom teeth pulled last month. Oh, God. Don't, oh, yeah. don't be a pussy. It's a wisdom tooth. Yeah, well, when was the last time you had wisdom teeth pulled? When you were a kid, when they were easy? No, I had it done when I was in my, close to 30. Perfect. That's a great time, between 20 and 30. Really? Oh, the okay. The optimal time for it. But anyhow, it doesn't matter. If you wait long and enough, it, they just fall out or they rot. The oral surgeon didn't numb up the, the right Ooh. side enough. And when it pulled out, I got to tell you, I would have rather had my balls in a vice. It hurt like hell. Well, well getting back to balls in a vice, will you tell them what it's like, Patrick? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, but at least I couldn't feel it. Yeah, yeah. So what's new with you, uh, Patrick? What, 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 anything exciting happening in your life? Uh, no, just working on a project. Wow. You're always, you're working, you're you work, you getting a lot of work involved. lately, aren't you? Well, it isn't a matter of a lot of work. It, the work is a lot. Oh, oh okay. It's not like you get a matter of uh, yeah. number of items. It the type of work I'm working on that you know, it, right right now I'm working on a book. So yeah. it yeah. takes a while to do that. Right. What is the book? Is it about wheelchairs to leave a little more room in the middle or something? No, it it's um it's a manual for one of our clients, and it's 
just boring stuff, but somebody's got to do it. It's money. Let, so. let me bring something up here. And again, something happened to me today that makes me just wonder. You know, what kind of service we're getting? I uh, ordered two rugs, uh, hallway runners for our apartment. Because the old ones are 10 years old and they're getting a little shabby and I, I just want new ones, right? So I order them. So mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care if you're gonna, it, so they got them, they were, got them here two days early. Only I get a message that says, we tried to deliver, but we had the, the address wasn't complete. It's from Amazon, right? They left off my apartment number. So now what I do is I get the message and I decide I better put my clothes on fast and see if I can find the truck. Why are you wait outside? And the truck is like two blocks away, so I go running for the truck, and the guy isn't in the truck. So now I got to sit around waiting for the guy. That's and, the, what I do. and the guy says, "Oh yeah, I tried to do that. It doesn't have your apartment number on it." And I said, "That's weird because everything I get from Amazon has my apartment number on it." And I said, "It's eight eyes." He says, "Well, I'll turn around and come back." past your apartment well he didn't for about four hours five hours but he finally <laughs> did and that was fine but it, i should have never had to run down the street i mean with all the computers that we have in place and all the uh, all the stuff we have going for us none of this stuff works you know i've had i, I can't tell you how many fuck-ups over the years from amazon now granted i order a lot from amazon you know, so there's occasionally something might go wrong, but this is all the time now. And then when you try to call them, there's no way to really call them. And once you do call them, you get somebody in a foreign country who just is operating from a script that they're reading. It, 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 it's just that things just get worse and worse and because we're relying so much on technology. Well, they go by GPS and I've had them in the court here and we got a you know circle of houses here yeah and i've been across the street and i know that they're going to deliver at my house because he's standing out in the middle of the court and he's got five packages he's going to deliver to each house or whatever right and he'll go to i'll say oh you got something for me and you say yeah which one are you 2260 okay so he hands me my package but he walks over to my house and stands on my porch and then pushes the button because his GPS says he has to be at that house to show the delivery. And then he walks back across the street and starts hitting the other places. Wow. Because well, it, it, his system says that he has to do that. Well, the one thing I do know about delivery. UPS, for instance, is if you're getting a UPS delivery, and the reason I, the reason, reason I ran out there was because uh, 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 years ago I found out that UPS drivers only have a very small area they work in. Well, yeah. But they got a lot of places to deliver to. So I yeah. like when I used to live in the marina in San Francisco, and the guy would come by and say, "We missed you." I would simply get in the car and drive. I knew the route. I would go around just a couple of, a, an eight square block area, and find the guy and get my package. You know, my DHL route in the city back in the seventies was five blocks of California Street in the city. Really? Up and down buildings. Up and down buildings. Wow. Uh, yes, yes, Alan. So you running after a truck. One of my neighbors was on their last roll of toilet paper when the big toilet paper shortage happened during COVID. Yeah. And he's in his underwear running down the street <laughs> for Amazon. And he, he catches the guy and the guy says, oh, I don't have it on the truck. And I'm like, what happened to you? His name's Jim. He said, well, we're down to our last roll. I said, I got plenty of toilet paper from Costco. I'll give you some. You know, it was so funny. He says, man, I stubbed my toe. I'm in my underwear. Nobody saw it. Don't worry. All the neighbors are standing there looking. Yeah. <laughs> so it kind of reminds me, yeah. Well, I'm glad for two things. I thank God for two things. Number one, I don't have a car. Number two, I don't have any babies. You know, because if you got cars or babies, you're in trouble now. <laughs> I, had a good, I had a good mess up happen to me. So I went to the store, a very popular store, and I bought a very large thing. Mm -hmm. And they only had one that was on the, you know, on the showroom. So I asked them, well, can I buy that one? They said, yes. I said, it doesn't have keys and it's all scratched up. So how much can I get off of it? They said, 
So the whole thing was seven hundred fifty dollars. So now it's five hundred dollars. So I said, okay, so here's my delivery and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, two weeks later, I get a brand new one delivered to my house. This is a they what? Were me, they were supposed to give me the demo model and they end up getting from their warehouse a whole new unit. So I got $250 off the of new unit. Really? really? Uh, and what, what, what was this that you were buying? It was a toolbox. A toolbox. A very large toolbox. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. I that TV. Yeah, so they, they only had the floor model left, so I said, okay, I'll buy that one because I wanted a certain dimension. And then all of a sudden, when I tracked it, I see it coming from, from Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. And I said, oh, this is a new one coming from my house. So. Well, you know what I do is when I, a lot of times they don't deliver to this. We, we have all these, we have four different in this court, or four different entrances, okay? And sometimes they'll deliver it to another entrance, which I can't get into because I don't have the key for it. And, and so I don't get my delivery. So I call, uh, I call them at, uh, at uh, Amazon and I complain. I didn't get my delivery. They say, okay, we'll mail another one out to you. In the meantime, somebody finds the package in another place in the building and they, they, they bring it over to me. So now mm -hmm. I got two of stuff, you know? I mean, mm -hmm. and I'm not about ready. What, what do, should I call Amazon back and say, hey, I suddenly have two of yours. You want me to send one of them back? Forget it. I'm not doing that. You know. No, hell no. No. So uh, you can always give it away as a gift. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, um, uh, Josh. So we, 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 we what we got we got in Israel and all of that. I will look up the whole Israel thing, the whole timeline on Israel. Uh, but uh, the uh, uh, there were hostilities that went on over there. There was no question about that. Yes, absolutely. you're absolutely right. But the the um, uh, UN, in order to shut everybody up, just came down on the side of the uh, uh, on the side of the Israelis, uh, you know, uh, or, or as I call them, my brother Yids, you know. So anyway, um, um, so Does anybody I anybody know what it costs to get a water heater replaced by a plumber. Seems like why do we look like we're uh, that's the subject of this show? Well, there are some people on the on the West Coast, maybe. Uh, Brian or oh gee well let's everybody if you can give Where, us a call and let you, us know how much a water heater costs to replace who gives us shit i could fly over there and try my best to fix it <laughs> <laughs> Alex, is this right? yeah i don't know I'm like a flood in the house yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah uh, i yeah you think, I, I, you think with all these cute little things i'm gonna you unlock? come to you come to come to the wrong guy about water heaters because i've never had to replace one in my entire life really you know, that, what happens when my water heater goes bad, Yeah. Uh, I just call the super. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't have that option. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um, so they want $1,700. Is, is that more like a boiler? Because I got to tell you something. We oh, it's like a water heater. Because I know the boiler, I know they have a shelf life the, like 10 years. How old, do you know how old it is? You're supposed to replace those, I think, after a certain amount of time. I'm being honest. You replace them when they fail. Oh, God. Well, the plumber told me when we did that, he says, they usually have a shelf life of 10 years. Yeah, that's what, the, that's what this out. show is all about. Right, I mean, that's what he said. Yeah, we're really, this is, yeah, this is why this question. show is so good. Is, this is getting <laughs> interesting. Is it, you think you it's getting Tony's interesting? Yep. Is Tony doing okay? Did you calm him down? Yeah, I calmed him down. Okay. His doctor I'll, I'll watch the other show. I'll it's watch the beginning right. of the show. I got to say, Brian, you watched the game tonight? They should get a technical, the Mavericks, to stand in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is nonsense. What's going yeah. on? For what? What, what, what went on? Explain it to me. You know what happened? Good, Brian. You tell. Them. No, no. The Mavericks were ahead by 19 points, and the Warriors came back and won the game. So it was great. Ooh. Yeah. Only great by two game. points, though, huh? Okay. But the, 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 the teams are just so close to the sidelines that they're right on the the line. The and that that team is right the there. Game. So this is football, right? Yeah, the football. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it's Basketball, yeah, the yeah. orange ball, yeah, yeah. yeah. When are all you know, it, it never seems. It always seems like there's some kind of finals going on. I mean, how long did, did we get these final four, right? The final four, and that was follow. That was the uh, that was the college, right? NCAA, and then after that, you had the pro teams having their thing. I mean, do we ever have a time when they just aren't playing basketball? It used to be that it was like ten weeks, and that was it, over and done with. I think football is worse, right? 
right, Patrick and Josh? The football is really Foot, bad, right? They foot, extended foot. it another game. and Football season used to start like the end of October, beginning of uh, uh, mm. November, and was over by by January. January, yeah, but the Super Bowl keeps getting pushed out. and Yeah, and I mean, and, and they, they, they start playing football earlier. And then baseball. Well, baseball is still 100 and what, 54? Four games. 82. 82 games. Didn't it used to be 150 something? 150. Maybe in the old days. What did you say? Uh, 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 when Mantle was playing in it, it was 154, I believe. Yeah. So now. When he had the record, I think he did it in 154 games, Mantle. Yeah, but, I mean, it, uh, it, but it's now in the 180s. The amount 162 of the games. 162 in the regular. Huh? Yeah. How many? 162 in the regular. Yeah. 162. So that's not much different than 154, you know. You know, when Mar Maris had 61, he did in 154 games only. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I just, uh, you know, I mean, but it just seems like sports are being played all the time. Yeah, it's getting, long. it's all year round now, everything. Right? And now, and now they've got a, they've got another football league, right, that goes on this time of the year? Nobody's watching that thing. What is it, the AFL? The Cup playoffs are in now, too. Uh, the, yeah. the what? Oh, the Stanley Sam Cup. Stanley Cup, yeah. Yeah. Toughest trophy in sports. Oh boy, it just never stops. You follow all this stuff, uh, um, uh, Josh? Do you, do you uh, not all of it. I uh, just the sports that I watch. I mean, what do you watch? Well, I watch NFL football and I watch Major League Baseball. Yeah, I shouldn't have asked you that question. Actually, it's kind of a stupid question to ask. I should just look at your background. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, uh, that's golf. Oh, that's, oh, that's golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about boy. this? Hmm? What's that? Uh, oh, hey, Giants are going to get judged next year. He, he lives from out. He's Giants from are going to get judged next year. Just yeah. to say goodbye to him his last season with you guys. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's see. We've gotten a a, a a let's see a health report from Brian tonight. Mm health report from Josh uh, the guy who could complain if he wanted to is Patrick but he never does yeah, you know and that's what I've always appreciated about you Patrick <laughs> you know with all the little things that have gone wrong for you in your life you don't I don't ever hear you complain about it you know you're an inspiration you should be an what inspiration of the rest of us a great ab attitude to have absolutely Anyway, hey, listen, there's the theme song. Hear that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. We kind of got a nice crowd here towards the end. Uh, Jeff, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, Alan, thank you. Josh, it's always a pleasure when you're here because you bring a certain level of intelligence to this program that it truly doesn't deserve. Uh, and uh, Tony, thank you for calling. Uh, you know, and if you want a prostate exam, I'll be happy to do one for you. And uh, 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 thank you very much, uh, uh, Kevin. Uh, and it's good that you got some good video tonight uh, when you're out doing it with your schools and so on. He does music stuff. Go to Ke Kevin's Stopper on uh, on um, uh, YouTube, and you'll see all the videos he does. It's really good. It's good. Great to see kids playing music. It just warms my heart they were good last night yeah. i haven't put up that video yet but go ahead thank Pat, you patrick blazik thank you and thank you to uh, brian everybody eh, give a big wave goodbye i'll give away a big wave goodbye at you and we'll call it a night okay there they go folks let me just uh, hang up on them here uh oh wait a minute everything's frozen up on me well this one oh there we go now it's unfrozen okay Man, it's always one thing or another, huh? I, I gotta get, I gotta get myself a new computer. That's what I gotta do. Anyway, hey, listen, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with the intersection. We'll take your calls on uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday at four o'clock on Facebook with the pop up show, and then right back here on next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Have a nice weekend. That's not what I wanted. Here's what I want. Ah, God.